Welcome to Binary Jazz again. Here we are. Another day, another week. Welcome. It is a podcast. We're doing the the Quiet Storm intro. No, no, we're not doing that. I'm not not (laughs) down with that one. Let's just go. Let's. I'm 100 miles an hour already. I'm not Spider Man. I watched another Spider Man movie, and uh, there's just so many of them, you know. Which uh, was it? A Tobey Maguire, or was it someone else? No, it was um... the other guy. I I think it's Tom Holland. Is that a name? Sure. (laughs) What's a name? It's like the. I was gonna say, oh, he's the young dorky Spider Man. I'm like, they're all. They're all young and dorky, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, Um, I was reading a thing. I was reading a thing recently that was talking about like why isn't Tobey Maguire in Spider Man anymore? And turns out he's a real asshole. Uh, He's a real jerk. Yeah. And I didn't know that. Uh, And you think like, it's funny because like, there are these actors who have like these faces that you maybe associate with their characters and their characters are like either so nice or so sweet or whatever. So you just assume the person is like that. And then you find out that person's a real like shit storm. Uh, And uh, yeah, it's a little bit, it's a little bit like a little bit surprising. Yeah, no, I know a few people, acquaintances who have worked with him and like in admin capacities and he's not very nice. Wow. What does that, I mean, I guess that gets you a starring role in a superhero movie, but other than that, what does that get you in life? Well, it doesn't get you the- uh... He doesn't get a starring role in the superhero movie anymore because they <laughs> yeah, but how many of those do you actually need him. to do, you know? Yeah. Well, I, he hasn't gotten I don't know. very I think many I, roles. I of it after one. Maybe, uh, he, maybe after half of one, I'd be like, I, this is. My understanding is me, he's yeah. been a little bit blacklisted before being an asshole uh, recently uh, and uh, instead doesn't give a shit and is just going to play poker all day. Seems about right. Yeah. I think he, he either had or has a production company of his own at some point. Um, hmm. Anyway, yeah, he's probably past talking the point way where, too much about the room. He's probably past the point where it matters. He's not even so, thinking about us, you guys. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not giving him the headspace. I am not Spider-Man, despite mowing the lawn the other day, walking under, like, brushing into a tree and then being bit here and here and here and here and here until I found the thing in my shirt. Uh, oh, and they all made, like, big, can I say juicy welts or is that too? Yeah, uh, yeah, you can say I it. I mean, I just said it. So by couching it with the can I say, like, I tried to soften the blow. It's didn't too work. early. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I was, I'm like, Rhonda's like, oh, like, do we need to? Do you need to do anything about it? And I'm like, I mean, probably not, no. Like, I guess if it gets worse, like, maybe we should do something. But it didn't get worse, and I didn't develop any cool superpowers. So overall, spider bite review, like, would not recommend. No. I mean, would but maybe not. you just haven't discovered the powers yet. I keep checking my wrists. and. But maybe those aren't the powers you got. Maybe you got something else, like, I don't know. <laughs> what else? What more, else more, more regular. Oh, I was thinking like in those superpower, I'd be like uh, more consistent knife cuts in the kitchen. Like that, <laughs> I, if that's what comes out of this, well, okay, that's a fair trade. I cut some vegetables sometimes, and I'm like, dang, like was I? What the hell happened? I start with a carrot, and these are they're very uniform. By the time I get to the end of the carrot, oh, like I'm feeding a damn horse or something. Like here's a chunk, <laughs> whatever you'll deal with. It. Like what? Have we you'll have we covered what we're doing here? Is, have we done uh, the no, did I just jump have, into being we just, we Spider-Man? Just skipped, we just skipped all that stuff. Um, an asshole. Yeah, usually what happens is is someone comes to the topic and the rest of us sort of discuss the topic and try to make make it seem like we know what we're talking about. Uh, That's when not often true we at don't. all. Uh, we basically and, got to preview the show. A topic shows up. We talk about whatever the hell we want to anyway and occasionally <laughs> mention the topic. And just like uh, that. I the have, topic. I don't know if we have a topic today, but I do have a sailing quiz. Ooh, I, I have a topic, but I'm always willing to give up give up the captain seat for a quiz. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. That was strong. <laughs> well, I think I think that we should have a topic. I don't think I don't know that we should do the sailing quiz for the entire time. Okay, okay. <laughs> as a as a land lover, I appreciate that you were quick on your feet there. <laughs> sea legs. I don't know. I reaching. I get very seasick, so I'm, I'm sea legs. 
<laughs> sea legs are a real thing. I felt like mm-hmm. uh, when we got home from our cruise, I felt for like two or three days like I was still on the boat. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, it wasn't so much that I was like stumbling around the around <laughs> the house or anything, but it definitely felt like everything was moving just a, just a little bit, just a little bit. I did a three day canoe trip when I was younger, like pretty much like all day on the river, get out in time to like cook dinner, set up a tent. And, and I vividly remember laying down like, uh, and like just the feeling of that little canoe under my butt was still there while I was laying on firm sand. Um, yeah. Yep. I should go canoeing. Yeah. I'm going to buy a, there's so much weird stuff available on Craigslist up here. I'm going to buy a very bizarre canoe and uh, take it to a lake. You can go portaging. Is that what it's called? Portaging. Yeah. Maybe that should have been my topic. <laughs> I believe that is carrying your paddling vessel over land, yeah. which like, I'm not down with that. Like it's made to float. Like, Carrying it seems like an awful lot of work. No, but you're like, you you go down the river and then you carry it to another river and keep going. I don't know. It's, it, it, I guess if I had a destination, that'd be cool. But honestly, like, I, I, I just want to throw it in somewhere and remember where I parked the car and come back to roughly that spot at a reasonable amount of time before I get too tired to remember where I parked. Like, that's, my threshold is much lower than the kind of person that would be like, I am taking this over to another river. Nope. That's one too many rivers for my liking. Perhaps more than one. You have to do it multiple times. There's a reference in our household that I think has something to do with either like SCTV or Kids in the Hall. And Hmm. it's so very Canadian references. (laughs) Um, And it's like a man who got struck by lightning when he was portaging. So now he's like a canoe man. He's like half canoe and half man. Anyway, this is... Because Robin was like, don't you remember? I was like, this is not something that I would, I grew up with. <laughs> <Can you remember? laughs> I love this idea. Like he's like, a, what's the half human we'll half I'll find horse thing? And, I'll find the clip and send it to you. He has like a theme song and everything. Wow. I love this concept. Like, like torso and then canoe behind. Although I would be concerned that the torso would be heavy. I would be like leaning forward. Leaning over. Well, it's not yeah. a good posture situation though. No. No, but I, I don't, I'm not in, like, would it, would I, would it be equal canoe halves out of my front and back? Because that also seems uncomfortable. Well, Perhaps I'm overthinking video. this. Okay. And you can do a, uh, a live Twitter review. <laughs> I almost tweeted, oh, it was something stupid. Never mind. I, what's the topic? Is it, is it, it's not canoes. The topic I'm going to have to spell um great <laughs> you know, that's, out. Always, that's always a good start yes um because, i mean you have to spell anyway yeah but i'll definitely have to spell this it's cops c-o-p-s-e i knew it off the top c-o-p-s-e <laughs> cops okay what does it mean uh like a small nook like a small woodland nook cops is obviously a that's not right corpse. that's not right because because there can be like a copse of trees uh a little a little woodland pocket that's the same damn thing i just said <laughs> <laughs> you're like i changed my answer to this thing <laughs> i i feel like i have one of those in my backyard that i could go cops. to so these. you've heard it before though i can yes. i can hear it okay. oh wait that's actually what it is no, but he's, he used it in a sentence. Yeah. But cor- wait, correctly though? Is that the part I, I missed? A, a no? copse of trees is a real thing. That is the context in which I have probably heard it. I do not oh, necessarily so know means. what God, that okay. means. What would that mean? <laughs> a, a small grouping of trees, a collection. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think, I think more specifically, it is trees that are, are grown in a circle around where there was previously a tree where seeds fell, right? So the parent tree is now gone, but you have this circular shape. No? Is it that specific? I don't think it's that specific. I'm That's doing a, a right ring. now because it is a small group of trees. 
Um, would the, so, this is so, a dumb question, so, so, which is exactly say, what you should so, vote for. So saying a cops of trees, though, is, is redundant. Is redundant. Yeah, yeah, I did want to point that out, but that's okay. But if you were saying okay. the kind of tree, it wouldn't be redundant. A copse, a copse of, of pineapple of trees. Pines. What? <laughs> pineapple trees. That was fun. Um, like, is there is there a number? I mean, like, I could definitely see in my head like a half dozen would feel like a copse, but would like a right. hundred in the midst of the plains also That's be considered a copse? Forest. But yeah. but in the midst of the plains where you have nothing else to run for miles and miles, could that still be a copse because it's. It, it, I was surrounded no, by nothing. That would be a forest. Yeah, How many copses per forest? Many copses. 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 Yeah, what's the possessive of cops? Copses. Um, well, there's another word. Why what would trees possess anyway? That's trees stupid. do not possess things. Well, what is We've, bigger uh, than a copse? A wood. A wood is larger than a grove or a copse. Larger than a grove. Oh, wait, a grove? A copse is a grove, which is smaller than a Groves wood. Groves can be substantial, though. Well, I'm just trying to trying to rein in the ratio of what we're working with here. <laughs> Dang. I'm just trying to figure out if I can put my backyard a copse or if there's too many trees for that. I it don't think be, I can. It's... It might be a grove. And there's also a verb a grove. of oh. coppicing, which means to intentionally prune something smaller than what it's supposed to be. Damn, I'd love to drop that on a manager at some point. I'm a current manager because that's not in a situation, but. Wait, say it again, coppicing? Coppicing? C-O-P-P-I-C-I-N-G, I think. It's like you're coppicing me in this meeting. But yeah, I'd like to drop that at some point. And then yeah these are all good crossword answers by the way which is where it came from the original oh i was wondering if it because it because because coppicing and the pruning and your recent inquiry into pruning uh fruit trees i was wondering if there was a correlation there and it went down this like tree rabbit hole where you discovered <laughs> uh copses that it seems it seems like that would be the case but no i was just doing a crossword puzzle are <laughs> either of you big on like dream interpretation um define big on <laughs> I, I mean i guess not like it's not like a hobby but like you've done the uh, research or own books or so uh when i was in the college uh there was chris reveals he's written a book on dream interpretation. no no i i did not take the dream i did not take the dream interpretation class but my partner uh, at the time did mm. and uh I think Erin did and then dropped it because it was crappy. <laughs> Maybe she actually yeah, well, took it. I, I can't remember. I can't remember. She might have actually taken it. But like, so I heard a lot about it, uh, a lot hmm. about uh, the practice and what you're supposed to do. And, and but like the interpreting, I mean, I guess there's different schools, right? Like there is the school that believes that like everything is a specific symbol so that if there's like a silver chalice in your dream then it definitely means this one specific thing and then there's the the school where it's like everything is like you know whatever man and like it's it's what it means to you you know how did you feel in the moment man uh and <laughs> What is the, the name school? of this character? <laughs> uh, which was the school that this class was. It was not the the hard, fast, like this symbol means this thing. It was like, mm -hmm. whatever just feels right in the moment, man. Um, I have several thoughts. Uh, the first is completely non sequitur. Um, Allison's lighting is fantastic because it Isn't fades it? on the one side to Isn't black, it? and I've I've been just so enamored good. with it. It like, <laughs> uh, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's number one. If you're if you are listening via it's audio, it's because windows are amazing, <laughs> right? I mean, it's 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 the window, but it's also the the color of your wall. Like it's yeah. it's it just the way that it sort of just creates this sort of framing it just yeah it is it is lovely the wall is doing the heavy Chris, lifting here <laughs> i think i think the phrase you're looking for is big mood <laughs> big, big mood, mood. Yeah, big mood. Yeah. yeah um the second thing is 
like yeah i get i get that on some dream levels that like well what 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 are you what are you what's currently like uh occupying your conscious and subconscious and it probably relates to that okay fair um but like like i like there's and there's some like the stereotype drinks like dr drinks nope dreams um like uh like the snake oh well like i saw a snake in my dream and it was coming towards me like okay well sure that probably is not like awesome um but like it, does it indicate that like you know something bad is coming or potentially like a decision or change like it you know maybe maybe it's maybe it's not i don't know bad snake bad snake um maybe uh but the other one is like uh airports is like a you know a big one um uh so like i i think that like at some level you'd be like yeah it means whatever you think it means but also like there's some pretty common metaphors that are uh root part of being a human that i think there are i think that that it probably varies based on sort of your uh social cultural expectations like the metaphor of an airport that's bad doesn't thing. work if you're an aborigine yeah, yeah right like it, you yeah. know like it's going to mean different things but the here's here's the thing that was that was like this was the the hard and fast rule with 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 the dream interpretation in this class the one thing that that if if I, as a non-participant of this class, were to take anything yeah. away, this is the thing to take away, which is like there. The whole thing was about dream journals, and like essentially, like as soon as you wake up, as soon as you realize you had a dream, you write it down immediately. Write down as many things as you can remember from the dream, including how you felt about them, and then go back to sleep. And then the next day, you look at this dream journal, this crazy, wacky thing that you wrote in the middle of the night, and you're like, okay, I was feeling this thing when this thing happened in my dream, and that probably relates to this other thing. Um, because you're not going to make the connections, like when you wake up eight hours later, or not eight hours, because that's not how time works. But like, if you wake up in the morning, and you're like, I kind of think I had a dream about airports, and and like, I kind of think I felt this way about it, like, there's going to be, there's going to be the nuance in there that you will have missed in your waking brain that you're like just awake out of the dream half asleep brain would have like had fresh in their mind and would yeah. have possibly like written things that you could interpret uh later from and that all, honestly that just sounds like a lot of work which is why you know fuck dreams <laughs> uh, um okay from there i have uh two more questions um the first is what do you know about time that we don't because you just said that's not how time works and i would like <laughs> yeah I some had illumination a about that too because i was like, like do you think that's not how people sleep or like i, I mean i meant, I meant like but like i meant like time actually does pass while we're asleep like i yes. think we can all agree on that or not like, i meant not, like sweet when you wake up from in the morning it will yep. probably not have been eight hours since the time that you had oh. the dream your dream okay. probably happened between like maybe two and four in the morning and then you had some other stuff and then you kind of tossed a bit. And so you're waking yep. up and you're several hours, but not eight hours because maybe yep. that was when you went to bed. That was what Got I it. meant. That's not how okay. time works. Okay. I, uh, I do not have a follow-up then. Okay. So sadly, I was hoping that we were going to delve into like the the time travel continuum. <laughs> I don't even get, like, I, I tell the kids, like, kids, we have this, uh, you have those, like, conversations in your house that just, like, keep happening. Um, well, it's very easy with kids, like, where they ask a question, and you're like, I, did, did we not, have we not covered this? Um, <laughs> so, like, time travel is a thing that pops up, and I always, as a dad, have to be like, um, we are time traveling. It's just one second at a time. So, like, if you can envision yourself as a time traveler, like in the future, think about all the knowledge you get to bring by being a time traveler from all the seconds that have passed. And imagine how powerful you would be as a time traveler from accumulating all that knowledge. And I keep saying it because number one, like I feel like if I say it enough, like I'll believe it. Because <laughs> <laughs> in, in time travel, like if you get to go somewhere with knowledge that other people don't have, like that's awesome. So if I'm time traveling one second at a time, like, I'm accumulating knowledge that will be useful for me on my journey. Um, so I guess repeating it, like maybe helps me believe that. But secondly, like, I, I kind of believe that, like, you know, we are, we are time traveling, like we can't adjust the speed or the direction, but the result of that is very much the story that we're told when we think about time travel in that um, 
you you have acquired knowledge along the way that will serve you in your quest, whatever that may be. And uh, and that's useful and cool, unless your quest sucks. I'm trouble. But maybe you have enough knowledge to change the quest. I don't know. Should have shaved before this. No. <laughs> no. We're um, your audio uh, podcast. Yeah. Well, it's getting a little this gray really bothering me. Maybe I should grow it out and see how gray it is. I mean, yeah, I might just shave here, here. Let's do it. Yeah. No. No. But then I gotta do like the hipster like beard soaps and stuff. Like you don't need to. Yeah, I was gonna say I was just like, there's no no requirement. I mean yeah. Rhonda, was, Rhonda uh, disagrees. <laughs> there yeah. was a um so we're uh, again we're watching Alone, and one of the one of mm-hmm. the contestants on Alone is from Salt Lake City, Utah. We're into season three, uh, which is in Patagonia, uh, and uh, one of them is from Salt Lake City, and he was he was like, "Oh, my beard's coming in," and he's like, "It's really soft." And I'm like, "Nope, that's not an experience I can identify with. My beard is not <laughs> soft. <laughs> I I wish." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Charlotte doesn't like this either. She's like like scratchy face yeah. uh so um you uh know or probably were aware that i was on a boat for a week uh and while on the boat uh we made port in a town known as petersburg which is an old uh norwegian uh town an mm-hmm. old norwegian fishing town in alaska uh, and while there, one of the naturalists spoke with some of the uh, sailors, the fishermen there, and acquired a, a list of sailing superstitions, uh, because sailors are quite superstitious. And I don't have her list, but I did some research after the fact because I wanted to take a, a sailing superstition quiz to Binary Jazz. So I have a list of, of things... Before you start, can I ask another yes. question? Yes. It's one of those days. Sure. Are there other, so you said it's a Norwegian fishing village. Yeah. What other kind of Norwegian villages are there? I feel like I've <laughs> never heard about Norwegian fishing villages. Do they have like Norwegian like jam making villages? or uh, Norwegian, Norwegian raiding village. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's it. So it's like fishing and raiding, but the raiding ones, I guess, um, just become fishing villages over time. Not Norwegian, but I know that there's like a, a like Solving uh, in California is a that's what like a that's like a Swedish thing. It's a, like a isn't it? Is it Swedish oh, it like Dutch. or Dutch? Maybe it's Dutch. Yeah. Ooh, if the next word's pastry, I'm super excited. A Dutch pastry village sounds lovely. It's not, it's not a pastry village. It's just a sort of like historically Dutch town that has lots of that there's- has like leaned into the the dutch heritage and like but there's no like middle it's like just dutch village dutch town there's no middle word places anderson's uh maybe maybe no no i'm so glad that you knew what i was talking yeah obviously (laughs) (laughs) is it especially good out of my mouth i was like oh no i've opened up a whole can of worms is it like why is the pea soup so notable there i don't know (laughs) oh so it's not like it's like good. I mean, it is. I've never it, had it. I don't know. It is good. I, I have had it. I mean, I've stopped it at the the pea soup, the Anderson's pea soup place uh, as, a, as a kid. I don't know if it exists anymore. But the thing is, like, it had like a really iconic sort of uh, design thing with like a sort of a cartoon character, as I recall, like as the like mascot. And so you saw these ridiculously huge signs on the freeway as you drove by. And that, I think uh ah. is the reason why it's memorable more so than the thing i don't know if that company exists anymore because like i remember you could buy anderson's pea soup in stores and i don't know like i've i haven't oh. seen it in like ev- forever um well yeah because it was yeah it was, it was like a, it was like it was like a warehouse it was like a it was like a factory for this this soup maker uh and then it had like a restaurant attached to it that you know are you all familiar with south of the border on interstate 95 I'm familiar with the United States border and that there are things south of it. Okay. There's this like kitschy, stupid um, tourist trap on Interstate 95, right near the 
uh, South Carolina, North Carolina border. And it's called South of the Border because it's just into South Carolina. Um, it is absolutely ridiculous, but you start seeing signs like 200 miles away and their mascot is this little mouse called Pedro. Uh, and it is like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely the exact thing you can expect it would be located in the South. Uh, anyway, I feel like it, maybe Anderson's pea soup was similar. There was a character that was iconic because it was advertising something all over the interstates or roads or wherever. Yeah, I yeah. think that's... Anyway, uh, south of the border, uh, this is not an endorsement. In fact, wait. it is a... Uh, yeah. So, uh, sailing superstitions. There are many, many, many superstitions that sailors <sighs> so have. excited for this one. Uh, and uh, so your job, I'm going to give you a thing. It might be an object. It might be a concept. It might be a day of the week. I'm going to give you a thing, and I want you to tell me if this is good luck or mm -hmm. bad luck. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I like, did you notice how our posture changed? We both like, <laughs> bring it on. <laughs> uh, renaming a boat, good luck or bad, bad luck. luck? Bad, bad luck. luck. Yes, it is bad luck to change the name of a boat. If you do, you must have a denaming ceremony and officially christen the boat again. I know that one because my grandfather bought a sailboat and had a denaming ceremony because it was a stupid name and renamed it. <laughs> uh okay uh foot tattoos good luck or bad luck i'm gonna go with good luck i'm gonna go with there's always a reason behind and i'm trying to think of a good reason either way uh i'll go uh, bad luck uh when tattooing became popular at sea a rooster and a pig were often tattooed onto sailors feet it was believed that these animals would prevent sailors from drowning by showing them the way to shore it's good luck hmm. um all right when i feel silly with my fish tattoo on my foot then <laughs> per personal grooming i'm gonna go bad luck yeah <laughs> i'd be based on the sailors i've seen stereotypically i'll say bad luck yeah, personal grooming is bad luck. Uh, anyone aboard a, a boat who trimmed their nails, cut their hair, or shaved their beard brought bad luck to the ship. Uh, Whoa, that's... Uh, I'll, I'll give you an easy one. Women. Bad luck. I'm going to say good luck, even though I'm pretty sure I'm wrong. Women were bad luck on board because they distracted the crew, which would anger the sea, causing treacherous conditions as revenge. However... Uh, conveniently for male crew, uh, naked women calm the sea, which is why so <laughs> figureheads were women with bare breasts. Conveniently. Uh, <laughs> wait, what, what the hell? <laughs> um, there is also a thing. Uh, there's also a thing where um, a if you are born on a boat, that is in fact good luck. You are known as a son of a gun. Because you, because the where they would, where the only place they had room to deliver babies was the deck that that the cannons would be on, um, and they were brought, they brought, uh, they brought good luck to uh, to the sailing ship. There's also um, bu, 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 let me go down. Um, where is it? Oh, where's the call one? Uh, well, we'll get to it probably, maybe. Oh, yeah, calls from a newborn uh, was uh, meant to prevent anyone from drowning. Uh, and so uh, sailors often would purchase uh, these uh, like placentic items uh, as uh, uh, before a voyage. Hmm. Uh, yeah. How about uh, saying good luck, saying the words good luck? That's bad luck, maybe. Yeah, this feels like a theater type situation. Like you don't do that. Yeah. Uh, some words uh, or sayings brought about bad luck on board, including drowned, goodbye, and good luck. Things to do with the land were believed to be bad luck if mentioned, such as the church, pigs, foxes, cats, and rabbits. Uh, right. That's also some of those animals. Don't. All right. Yeah. Um, let's do. Let's do uh, Thursday. Uh, bad luck. Thursday is good luck. Nope. Uh, it's bad luck to set, set sail on Thursday because Thursday is Thor's Day, the god of storms. Oh. Uh, 
Uh, it's also uh, bad luck to sail on Friday, which is, uh, uh, where is Friday? Uh, Friday is named after the Norse goddess Frigg or Frigga. Uh, so for a while it was good luck, but then, but then uh, in early Christianity, uh, Frigga was considered a witch. Her day became unlucky because it was also the day of the week that Jesus was crucified. Jeez. Yeah. Rough crowd. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. So that like a four day weekend if you're a <laughs> sailor. Yeah, just don't sail. Yeah. Um boo, 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 boo. where can we go? Uh let's say, oh, stirring tea with a fork. <laughs> okay, first of all, why would you even do it? <laughs> well, it's so obscure, it has to be good luck because you would have to you would that's something you'd accidentally or like would be a, like a common thing. So I think you would have to like, oh. Pass me that fork. I need to stir my tea. Oh, no, I think it's bad luck. You use to scoop something into it. Yeah. I think it's bad luck because it has something to do with like paddles not paddling enough or something. <laughs> oh, or it's like the trident. Like, yeah, stirring tea know? with anything other than a spoon basically would invite bad luck. Yeah. <laughs> and also because you need to do some dish cleaning. <laughs> um, tossing a sailor overboard and then hauling him back in. Good luck or bad luck. I mean, for, for the person or just in general? For the, for the ship, for the voyage. <laughs> but maybe for the person. Be... Good luck. Bad luck. Uh, in fact, that one is good luck. In order, for fish, in order to encourage fish to be caught, Scottish fishermen would begin their fishing session by throwing one of the crew members overboard and hauling them back in to, I guess, sort of show the fish how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Listen up, everybody. <laughs> Fall in line, fish uh cats good luck or bad luck good luck i'm gonna go good luck cats are good luck felines were welcomed aboard merchant and navy ships as pets protectors pest controllers and highly intuitive creatures uh sharks on the other hand well on the other hand it sounds like bad luck but actually could be. They are not intuitive creatures. No, they're very intuitive. I don't know many sharks. I'm gonna go bad luck. Sharks following a yacht. There's fish nearby, so that yeah. could be good luck. If sharks following a yacht were considered a symbol of bad luck, thought to be a warning of death, like the Grim Reaper of the sea. Uh, we'll continue on the animal uh, train. How about an? How about albatross? Uh, I'm yeah. making up reasons in my head. And mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, either way. I don't yeah, good luck. It's good. Albatross is good luck. Albatross sure. were good luck, a uh, sign of good luck and protection. It was quite bad luck to kill an albatross. That's why in the rhyme of the ancient mariner, he killed the mm-hmm. albatross and he had to wear it around his neck. Uh, seabirds in general were believed to carry the souls of dead sailors. So bad luck to kill one. Yeah, I would uh, say so. Dolphins. Good luck. Good luck. They're like cats of the sea. Yes, like they were like cats. Of, <laughs> seeing a dolphin is a sign of good luck because they often <laughs> indicate nearby land. One uh, of this... the smartest species in the world, cats of the sea. <laughs> <laughs> they would have been called catfish had that name not already been taken. Uh, stepping aboard a ship with your right foot. Oh, dang, I should know this. I don't know why I should know this, but I feel like I should know this. Good Which luck. foot are you supposed to use? Uh, no, the I think left it's side is left the devil's foot. side. <laughs> I think you're supposed to use your left foot to board. You are not supposed to use your left foot when stepping aboard a ship. That was a trick question. They specifically told us that not to step aboard a ship with your bat- left foot because it was bad luck. I mean, they didn't tell us like they they said it like you know. If you did it wrong, this. they threw you overboard for good luck. Yeah, no, they didn't. They're like, are you left-handed? Just go sit in the corner. <laughs> Unless you have a cat with you, in which case we're all good. Uh, how about flowers good luck or bad luck oh bad luck bad luck there's no flowers at sea good luck you're close to land they're used they're used to decorate when someone dies they're they're, they're like sharks yep flowers are closely related with funerals decorate with sharks that's not what I meant at all (laughs) flowers closely related to funerals and therefore banned from ships superstitious sailors wouldn't even let them on board as as a bon voyage gift any petals that made it on a ship were quickly thrown overboard. 
Bouquet of Sharks is an awesome name for a band. Bouquet <laughs> of Sharks. Uh, red Skies. Red Sky in the morning. Sailor take warning. Red Sky at night. Sailor's Delight. There I don't know. Go. It depends on what time of day it is. <laughs> yes. What I love about that is I just recited that to myself in my head. And I was like, why do I know? <laughs> yep. I yep. want to know nope. that. And what the hell does it mean? <laughs> uh, yeah. No, red, red Sky at night. Sailor's Delight. Red Sky in the morning. Sailor's Take Warning. Uh, it's been used for millennia as a forecasting tool to predict the weather based on the reddish glow of the sky in the morning or dusk, which is caused by hazy or cloudy skies. Sailors believe they could tell what weather was coming their way. Red sky at night. Uh, sunlight must be able to cut clearly from the west without any yeah. cloudy hindrances, the legend goes, and good weather it will be. But if it's red sky in the morning, clear skies in the east are letting sun break through, which assumes clouds are coming from the west instead and bad weather is on the way. Um, I also feel like every time I say Sailor's Delight, I'm like, oh no, thanks. I'm thinking veggie tonight. How about Buddha's Delight? Like that sounds a lot more appetizing. <laughs> I don't know what a Sailor's Delight is, but I would assume that there's a lot of weird seafood. Weird seafood, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, spitting. Uh, if it's overboard, good luck. If it's under the deck, it's bad luck. See, now I'm waffling. I'm just going to take both sides. Yeah, I was like, that's both. It's <laughs> not... Yeah. Um, good luck i have spitting is good luck i'm not sure about spitting on on deck but i do know yeah, that spitting... like, like i don't think that i aside from good luck bad luck i don't think that's encouraged <laughs> um <laughs> to bring good luck into, like personal hygiene though you know to bring good luck sailors would often spit into the ocean before setting sail for a long journey journey they would pour wine on the deck to bring good fortune hmm. uh let's see what else haven't we done uh, odd numbers. Ooh, this is an interesting one. Um, probably bad luck. I am going to go with good luck because <laughs> because it's the opposite of what else. <laughs> <laughs> when setting fishing nets, it was good luck to use an odd number. Good luck. Um, Unless it's any reason team, why? Then it's the devil's I number. don't have a reason why odd okay. numbers are good luck. They just are. Many of these things are. just are. <laughs> uh, Eggshells. Um, Wait, what were the tattoos? The tattoos were of a of a a rooster luck. and a pig. So, oh, rooster makes it tough. Then I don't know if eggshells are good luck. That, yes, that, that's what makes it tough. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Before we, I knew it was a rooster, I, I had a reliable answer. I'm going to say bad luck because of something about like decorating funerals with eggs and flowers. <laughs> and bouquets Good and sharks. Luck. I don't know. Eggs. Bad luck. Eggshells had to be broken into tiny pieces once an egg was cracked open. This was meant to stop witches from coming onto the ship to, uh, to sail in the pieces of the shell. Because that's what witches do. <laughs> Ahoy! <laughs> You jump into the shell and they sail along with you. I'm gonna Photoshop myself into a little eggshell. <laughs> I just thought that, like, I would, I wanted Allison, um, like, social icon of Allison, like, in a shell. Like, yeah. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.